we had what we call the disc. The disc was meant to make you not to speak your mother tongue. Mother tongue was a crime. Speaking mother tongue was a crime because they wanted learners to speak in Swahili and English because that was English was the language of instruction. So if you don't understand English, then what are you going to learn? Hello, welcome back to the channel or welcome if this is your first time on this channel. By the way, my name is Doreen and you're very welcome here. I'm so glad that you came. Now, on this video today, or in this video today, is it on this video, on this video? In this video today, I want us to talk about something that I feel people are not talking about it. I don't know about you, but for me who has been here on the internet, like forever, I don't hear people talking about how immigration affects children in terms of language. And as somebody who has children or as a parent who has moved from Kenya to the Netherlands, I feel like this is a topic that people should be talking about because, I mean, it's not even about just immigration alone, but the way um, the societies or cultures are mixing up today and our children are affected. I mean, when it comes to cultures, our children are affected because it's not like the way we were growing up. When I was growing up, for example, my parents were speaking my tribe language and I learned English and Swahili in school and it was, they were not, they, they didn't have to worry about whether I'm going to know my mother tongue or not because that was something they taught me from when I was born because they were speaking the mother tongue, they spoke the language and that is how I picked my mother tongue. And when I went to school, I didn't know how to speak Swahili, I didn't know how to speak English and that is how I picked the English and Swahili in school. But our children, I am 33 years old as I record this video and I feel like my age mates, my parents who are, we are in the same age group, are faced with the same problem with the same challenge where especially um, the integration of languages or just the mixing up of cultures, children, are they don't get to speak or to understand their native languages. And this has been a subject to debate, especially to parents, our parents, like elderly, our parents and our grand grandparents. And I thought, let, let me just be frank with you. I thought that was an issue when I was in Kenya, when I was living in Nairobi. And it was an issue that my child couldn't speak my mother tongue because I am a Luya from Kenya and my husband is a Luo. Luya and Luo, for those who don't know, in Kenya, we have many tribes apart from Swahili and English. Swahili and English, English and Swahili are, I mean, English is the official language of Kenya. And Swahili, which we call Kiswahili, is the national language of Kenya. Like in Kenya, everybody, everybody speaks Swahili, unless, I don't know, but everybody speaks Swahili, even if it is broken Swahili. And usually we have two types of Swahili. Just Let me just give you um a little background so that you understand when I talk about this issue of languages. We have... Swahili and we have like we have the language that is known and we have the colloquial language that is spoken by the people like you have what you learn in class as Swahili Kiswahili and we have the Kiswahili that you will hear people speak on the street so in Kenya we have like two like three type two types of Swahili we have the Swahili that is spoken at the coast the coastal in Mombasa the, the coastal area of Kenya that is fluent Swahili, which is a bit different from the Swahili that is spoken in Tanzania. They can, they are, they are intelligible, they can understand each other, but they are a bit different. And then we have the Swahili, the normal, like the regular Swahili, the Bara, Swahili, Kiswahili, Chabara, the one that I speak. Myself, I speak the, the street Swahili. So the street Swahili, I can speak it and I can speak the what we call Kiswahili Sanifu that is spoken in the classroom, for example, or in a formal setup. Like if I say, Yule Mbwa Niwangu, 
that dog is mine yule mbwa ni wangu ama mbwa yule ni wangu that dog is mine if i speak the street swahili i'm sorry it's getting boring at, at this point but just bear with me because this is going to make you understand why i even made this video in the past in the first place so if i say in street swahili or colloquial swahili i'll say ile mbwa ni yangu ile mbwa ni yangu and ile mbwa ni yangu is broken swahili according to the swahili the swahilians of the coastal area of kenya and the swahili who speaks kiswahili and if they tell you that is wrong ngombe ile ngombe ile ngombe eh buka hapa you see that is the swahili i talk ebu kam hapa is kam is an english word ebu is kiswahili so kam hapa like you are just mixing kwani unafanya nini ebu kam kama raka ebu ka hapa so una do what are you doing so una do what are you doing like it's the swahili that we speak unaenda so um inakuaje so inakuaje you see so is an english word and swahili in akwaje za swahili so we have we are just um ebu mkol to scan asemaje mkol mkol tena kwani ashiki simu like call them mkol so this has really affected our children and i thought that was a problem until i moved to the netherlands and i discovered that i don't I don't have to battle with my mom about my son not knowing how to speak luya or my son not knowing how to speak luo and now I'm not battling with that anymore I'm not but I'm now battling with him not knowing swahili by the way this is kind of like embarrassing but to be honest my son doesn't know how to speak swahili yeah he doesn't know how to speak swahili he understands that he cannot speak Swahili the way I spoke Swahili when I was growing up he is struggling to speak Swahili because his environment the environment he grew up like for example myself I am a Luya my husband is a Luo and I have spoken a lot of English and I speak a lot of Swahili I I speak a lot of English more than Swahili so when we met with my husband obviously we spoke a lot of English and Swahili and where did he pick that he picked it from us when he went to school kids are speaking English in school in Kenya right now if you go to schools kids are speaking english at the inception level not like my time when i was going to school and we were struggling to speak swahili in fact we had what we call the disc the disc was meant to make you not to speak your mother tongue mother tongue was a crime speaking mother tongue was a crime because they wanted learners to speak in swahili and english because that was english was the language of instruction so if you don't understand english then what are you going to learn so you have a rule of speaking english from monday to thursday because there was so much mother tongue there was so much tribes language that it was hard for teachers to teach what what was what was in the curriculum now you see where we are coming from so we learned at this that level today if you go to, to in kenya apart from even villages today kids are going to school there they already know how to speak english they speak english very well and they don't know how to speak the other language because some of them know especially if you are lucky enough to have parents who speak who speak similar tribe language but you tell me i don't know about you if you have if you you have been in a position like mine how do you manage to, to teach your child all those languages if your child is growing up in that environment where they are not less hearing people speak like my son only hears me speak when i'm speaking to my mom or my sister and we cannot have a a seamless conversation with my husband i mean we cannot speak one language apart from english and swahili that is the language you speak here and when we came here we had another challenge why because here in the netherlands people speak dutch and english so dutch and english dutch is a priority because if you have to integrate into the dutch culture you have to learn dutch so now i'm struggling to help to learn dutch to help my son learn as much dutch as he can because that is the language of instruction in school so kiswahili is out of the picture and i can't just say that now swahili is out of the picture because he needs to learn swahili 
And that is why I shifted from now lawyer and law and now we are doing Swahili. And right now I speak to him most of the time in Kiswahili and even my daughter in Kiswahili. So I'm mixing up Kiswahili and English and I'm also trying to learn some Dutch. So it is like this. The good thing about them is that they are learning, they are young and they are learning and they are growing. So they are picking up the languages very fast. But we, I don't know, tell me about if you are in a position like mine, tell me, or if you know somebody who is like me, how do you go about it? Do you choose multilingual for your children or do you choose bilingual? What do you choose for your children? Because for us right now, our priority is that our children can speak Swahili and they can speak English because they are going to automatically speak Dutch here. They will speak Dutch. So they have to learn Swahili. Swahili because they will learn English from the TV. They have to learn Swahili because when they go back to Kenya, I do not want them to be out of place because there is nothing as frustrating. I have been there. There is nothing as frustrating as being in a place that people are speaking a language you don't understand and they cannot switch. I have been in Kenya. I am married among the Luo community of Kenya and I am a lawyer community of Kenya. And being there in Luya land, whenever we go to the countryside, it is crazy. And I have had to learn a few Luo words to just make my stay easier. Even if I can't speak, at least I can understand. So it makes me feel like relocation really messes with um, languages, especially when it comes to children. It really messes like if you hear somebody saying, um, my child can speak very good English and the child cannot speak their mother tongue and they cannot speak Swahili. They struggle with Swahili. And sometimes people, sometimes we blame ourselves as parents, but sometimes we forget that it is the environment that sometimes dictates what language children speak. We as parents will try to speak to them in that language, but children will learn from the environment and not from what you tell them, from what they hear, from what they see. So most likely they will learn from the environment. Tell me what you think. This is something that I have, I, I, I struggle with every day. And this is something that I feel like uh, parents of children who are, I mean, children of parents who relocate or if you relocate or you have, you have, you have a husband who is not Kenyan or you have a wife who is not Kenyan, or you are not living in Kenya, or you are living away from the village. And even if you're living in the village in Kenya, you're still going to face the same challenge because anytime you go to school, kids are now picking up languages and it's just, they're just mixing up. Even now, right now in Kenya, in a Swahili class, teachers are having it difficult. They're having a difficult time to have a child write an insha. Insha is like you're writing a composition, you're writing in, in fluent Swahili because there is a lot of mixing up of languages that it just, it just becomes complicated and it, it's tough. Tell me, tell me what you think. For me, right now, what I'm doing, I'm just focusing on English and Swahili and then I'll, focus, I'll do Luya and uh, Luo. I do it once in a while, like greetings and such stuff. But honestly, it's tough. It's, it's, it's really, it's really, really tough that we want our children to learn our, to speak our languages. I'll give you an example with them. My sister, my sister lives in Kenya. My elder sister, she lives in Kenya with her children and they live in Cumberland. They live in Cumberland. That is where she works. So her children, they're picking up Kamba words and they don't know how to speak Luya. Hmm? They don't know how to speak Luya. And not because my, 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 my sister doesn't speak the Luya. She speaks. But because these kids go to schools where kids speak English all the time and they speak Swahili, so the kids just speak the languages that they speak. So for me, I feel like it's not about relocating. It's just that relocating makes it worse. That goes the alarm to pick my son from school. And that is why I'm going to end this video. And just tell me what you think. I've really been struggling with this. Tell me what you think and give this video a like. 
if you found it um like it it really makes you think ab about the whole issue of languages tell me what is your tech on this and if you have any uh, piece of advice you can tell me but not overwhelming of course thank you for watching please like this video please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video